Here's an amazing story of openness, or a story of amazing openness. It begins at a public music forum. You can read just on the open web. To be able to contribute, you need to have an account. But really, for all intents and purposes, it's a public forum. I've been reading this forum since 2002, and during that time, I've learned a great deal about music, about music recording, but most importantly, I've seen people come together to discuss topics of common interest and to build on each other's knowledge. In this story, I have followed a path that led over many years through many lives to a question that was finally answered. It's a very stirring story, and I'm happy to share it with you now. This is the thread that was begun in March 16th, 2014, by a fellow who called himself Candid Views. Uh, that was a picture of him in his uh, early youth. He was much older than that when he started the thread. And you'll see that not only is he the thread starter, but he also has a marker in memoriam because he passed away a little less than a year after he started this thread, or about a year later. He started the thread by saying, look, I made this tape in 1967. I heard some woman singing down the hallway in my dorm at UC Santa Cruz. It was an amazing sounding singer. I had a portable Sony tape recorder and a couple of cheapo microphones. I ran down the hallway, set everything up, asked her if I could record her. She said yes. And here's what I ended up with. And you can go, you can read this. I encourage you to read it yourself to get all the details and to get the complete amazing story of openness after Candid Views put this tape up on YouTube and embedded it in a music forum where people love to talk about music and also like a good musical mystery, the thread took on a long, long life, many, many contributions up through about 2015 or so when the thread starter unfortunately passed away. No solutions, but over the years, people would keep coming in and saying, well, what about this person? What about this person? What about this person? And by years, I mean until 2023. So if we go all the way up, I'm going to try to find a later page here so you can see where this begins to go. Uh, what happened was somebody had, uh, it was, uh, you'll see it here, somebody had, had been proposing one particular singer a couple of years back. It turned out that just wasn't the one at all. And yet um, someone comes in then and says, what about this one? And it was, I don't know, the seventh or eighth or 10th or 12th person who'd been proposed. This one was also a, a fairly uh, late entry. And then Monk bought lunch. Kansas City, September 12th, 2023, says, any chance the mystery singer is Carol Duke of the late 1960s San Francisco band Marvin Gardens? Now, by this time, you have to understand, Candid Views, has been dead and gone for eight years. He did not live to find out who this mystery singer was. He didn't get her name when he recorded this, uh, and he was never able to identify uh, her in any way. And yet, eight years later, on an open public forum on the web, uh, somebody says, could it be this person? And the way this turns out is that this singer, Carol Duke, who led this band, Marvin Gardens, which was big in San Francisco in the late 1960s, turns out to be the mystery singer. A label called High Moon Records had just recently acquired the rights to a recording that Marvin Gardens had done, along with some early demos, and had put that out. Some of it was up on YouTube, as you can see here. So because the stuff was in the open, on the web, it was discoverable. And before we get to the end of this thread, because that's uh, going to be, um, you know, post, uh, what is the number here? It's uh, 956. There's more information. People are chiming in, more information about Marvin Gardens, more photographs of the singer, more information from the liner notes, more information from the um, a website of the company that uh, put out the recording of Marvin Gardens. We're just on page 39, just since the middle of September, 20 more pages 
of this thread have continued to explore not only this mystery, but now that the mystery has been solved, more people are chiming in. The sister of the singer chimed in. The daughter of the person who first began the thread chimed in to say, when I was a little girl, we were growing up in my father's household. He was a real card, but he loved music, and he would always play this tape for us that he had made over and over. It became part of our family, this amazing singer, this amazing sound, and this completely mysterious recording. We don't know who this person is. And so you get more posts, and you get more posts, and you get more posts, and you get more posts. You get links to this music that is out there for everyone to hear. You can go through this and download the original dorm recording in very high quality sound. And it's an astonishing tale of what the web donated to the world by Tim Berners-Lee can accomplish at its best and at a considerable scale that's never all there at once. But because of the long tail, some of you may remember that if you've been around for a while, what you have are incremental additions and contributions over many, many years as long as the forum's there, as long as the links don't rot, as long as the document is still in place, as long as somebody still has that domain there, there's a lot of ifs there, a lot of as long as. But when things do persist, amazing stories of openness will still accumulate. They will still mount up from something small to something monumental. That's the web. That's why it was invented. That's why we need to take care of it. Thanks for letting me share this story.